Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Good afternoon, everybody. It is the Steve Jones Show. Matt Catrillo here with you. Steve will soon be there from the Sunbury Motors studio. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. And online at sunburymotors.com. Ford, Kia, Hyundai, lots of pre-owned inventory. A great service department that simply gets it done for your current vehicle with the diagnostics, with the inspections, and so much more. And a sales staff that's not just there for the sale, but is there for you. And that's why everybody keeps coming back again and again. And that's all at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. And online at sunburymotors.com. Got a loaded show today once again. We've got Tony Knott joining us, Business of Sports. Lots to get into with him. I'm very curious to get his take on the broadcasting carousel that's been going on in the NFL this offseason. Of course, we had the latest with Drew Brees a couple of days ago, which I I know people are trying to make a story out of this because that's what we do here in uh, in this business. But if anybody thinks that that Drew Brees quote on his future, in be, first of all, in flux or maybe leaving NBC entirely, then he mentions... I might do this, this. I still might play football. Clearly, he was being a little sarcastic, a little facetious. I, there is no way he's considering going back to the NFL, if you read that tweet correctly. So that, that to me, is a non-story in itself. But nonetheless, it's been talked about. We'll get into that with Tony Knopp today at 435. Rob Beer Temple today to talk Pirates. And we also have Neil Kulong, as we usually do every Tuesday. Lots to get into with that random A-B tweet that came out yesterday saying he wants to retire a Steeler. Doesn't want to come back and play for the organization, but he wants to come back and retire a Steeler. (laughs) And I I just... This guy just really just doesn't, still does not get it. It, The more that we see A-B do, the more that I just continue to shake my head and just laugh of a guy that just doesn't get it at all. Considering everything that he's done on and off the field, all of his destinations, how he left Pittsburgh, you name it, what does the Steelers organization owe him, really? I get it. Everything that he accomplished with Pittsburgh, he's probably one of the best receivers, if not the best receiver in franchise history. I get it. But, and we've seen good players and their relationships maybe sometimes the wrong way with teams that they were with for decades. Of course, we just saw that report about Ben Roethlisberger apparently via Jerry Dulac, who will join us Friday at 4.06, by the way, about Big Ben. But that and even other athletes that we've maybe raised an eyebrow here and there of how things ended with organizations – Nothing was as epically bad as it was for Antonio Brown with the Steelers. To me, the Steelers owe him nothing as far as letting him retire, retire his number, whatever the case may be. To me, they owe him nothing. If they want to do it, that would be certainly the Rooney way. You know, I I would tip my hat off to them if they end up doing something for Antonio Brown. But to me, the organization owes them nothing. Owes Antonio Brown absolutely nothing. But that's just me. 
Now, as far as Penn State goes today, today, yeah, or yesterday, I should say, Penn State officially announced the arrival of Hunter Norzad, the offensive lineman who was an All-American at Cornell last season. And it's just the more, more of these off-season acquisitions for Penn State becoming official via the transfer portal. And, of course, we didn't see him in spring ball. Just going kind of back to spring ball, I said this a little bit, but I think it really should be a major storyline. I'm surprised that it's not really as talked about, at least in my view. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. But I'm not as I'm not as around directly around the around Penn State as much as someone like Steve is. But it's great, of course, that you've got this influx of talent coming in for Penn State football next year, especially in the offensive line. But a lot of these guys aren't coming in until you begin fall camp. That's a lot of things to acclimate in a short amount of time. So I do wonder how that affects things. And I think that is should be a fairly significant question mark as far as guys trying to develop chemistry and things like that because a lot of these guys coming in don't have a very big window either with Penn State. So just, just seeing that today with... Penn State finally announcing a guy in Hunter Norzad who should be a big upgrade to the offensive line. Well, you don't have a whole lot of time to get him acclimated now. So I, I think that's something to really think about as we get closer to fall camp. And the other thing that came by today, then there's this too. This was tweeted by Adam Rittenberg of ESPN, who we've had on the show here before. This was about an hour ago. It says, talk to Sandy Barber, outgoing PSU AD, chair of D1 Football Oversight Committee. Sounds like removal of initial counters, 25, and transfer windows coming. With a quote from Sandy saying, we all understand that there's a challenge here. There's that intersection of what needs to be done and what we can do. That's very interesting. And it's been talked about of what needs to be done with the transfer portal now that you have NIL in full swing. And I kind of like that idea of removing this idea of initial counters and transfer windows especially. So that's something to keep an eye on. No doubt about that. Well, Steve just texted me. He is stuck in traffic at a car accident. So he's on his way in. So he should be joining us soon. But we got a lot to get to today. We got Rob Beer Temple, Talk Pirates, Talking Steelers today with Neil Coolong as we do every Tuesday. Then Tony Knopp in the final half hour, business of sports. Last to get to today, tomorrow, we've got Ala Abdunabi, the color analyst for the Sixers on NBC Sports Philly to put a bow on the Sixers. Embarrassing ending to a disappointing season, ending to the season. Got that tomorrow, Jerry Dulac, Friday at 4.06. Oh, oh, there he He's back in the house. There we go. Oh, yes, there was a, in getting over here, there was a traffic accident. Not involving me, fortunately, but it, Im- it involved a vehicle, it involved a motorcycle, so all the traffic was backed up in the area I need to turn to get t- to come down here. So I was hung up in traffic during that. Hopefully everybody's okay. It's also election day, uh, primary election day, and I am very big on the Keep America Beautiful program. So if you could clean up all those stupid political signs and get them off the road, that'd be great. Uh, so <laughs> I'd rather see grass than your political sign. There we go. <laughs> oh, I forgot. You're in the politics, so you love that stuff. I still have to go vote. Yes. That's kind of where I'm at. No, I'll eventually. I'll, when I'm done with this, I'll go vote. Get it over with. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I took care of that on my way in this morning, so. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's, uh. Yeah, you know what? I was going to, and I decided to cut my lawn instead. And then I uh, decided to weed whack my yard instead. Then I decided to, um. Uh, then I actually had a. Another tree I had to trim, so of course I brilliantly cut down a couple of big branches, and of course one of them 
sideswipe my arm. And, you know, now did it hurt? No, but I looked at my arm as it's bleeding. I'm going, well, that was smart. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like me last night. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like, ugh. You know, because I planted, what I did was I planted grass in my yard. And, uh, and it, it, it needed to open it up. Too much shade in an area. So that's what I was trying to do is open it up a little bit. That's what we decided to do, what was needed. So we did. And uh, what we did, I ended up doing <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, yeah, it's, uh, so no, I did, did I vote yet? No, I actually took care of my life, which was way more important than the thing. I, I will vote. That's why the polls are open when they, right, you know, as long as they are. So I can go after the show. I will take care of it. Okay, but at the same time, we all have lives, and they are more important. Sorry, maybe not the attitude you wanted me to give, right? I, I, I'm in it just for what I do for a living. How about that? Other than that, I'm actually with you on that. No, I mean, I got stuff to do. I got stuff that, you know, I needed to take care of today. And in terms of priorities, I will vote. But I'll vote whenever I darn well feel like doing it. <laughs> okay, good. It's the most important thing in the world. Can I go do it? No, I thought doing my yard was more important today. I'll get around to doing it. That's why the polls are open till late. I'll get I'll get over there at some point. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So the Big Ten's joint group meetings are taking place. And uh Kevin Warren did not commit to a timeline on the announcement of the new television deal. He also did not rule out broadcast streaming on football games as part of the future package. He said that he said that he said the Big Ten is on the cutting edge from a media landscape standpoint. He was talking to uh, Matt Fortune and Scott Docterman from The Athletic. He said, quote, I think from where we sit, it's important for the Big Ten to stay on the cutting edge from a media landscape standpoint. We have so many passionate alumni who live across our country, who literally live all across the world. And what makes this interesting now is that's why it's been important for us we have met with every major player in the media landscape business, which, to his credit, that's what they have to do. You have to think. Uh, I did bring up streaming a long time ago, right, Matt? I think I brought it up a long time ago. You did. I said I just didn't want it to be a primary package. I think you need to. I think it should be a package. The NFL opening up Amazon Prime. You know, for the thir- for Thursday night football, I think open the door now for everybody to think that way, and the Big Ten can do that. Warren said that there are still issues to be sorted, but hopes to get things finalized and to be in position to make an appropriate announcement. See, I still think that's June, right around June five six. Okay. Uh, let's see. Reports earlier this month had indicated the Big Ten could finalize the new deal by Memorial Day. Iowa Athletic Director Gary Barta, uh, now they say that they that the deal could net nearly double the current distribution. Now I've never said that. I've never once said it was going to be over a hundred million. I never have said that. I've been saying the entire time that it'd be great if they got to some like between 70 and 80 million and were able to get increases that could eventually get it toward 100. I've never I've never said double. You I, you've never said double either, have you, Matt? You and I've never said that. Nope. I think you and I you and I have been pretty realistic about what they could get and neither one of us have ever said they they would double it. Yeah, definitely. Ne- never. Um Barta told The Athletic, there's talk that doubling. I mean, I wish that were true. There's nowhere even near that possibility. But there could be some potential upside 
nothing near that kind of money. Again, I said between 70 and 80 million, right? That's not double. The Big Ten reportedly had Fox help consult on its behalf during this round of media rights negotiations, but there are a number of different networks in play. We have Fox, obviously, it's a great re- relationship with ESPN, ABC, CBS for basketball. That's our current group, Barta said. We're, what I'm excited about as I watch and hear updates from our commissioner, you've got NBC interested. You've got maybe Amazon or some sort of streaming services interested. TNT's interested. So as good as it's been, it looks like the interest is still there to make it even better. So we'll see, but I feel really good about it. Well, you should feel really good about it. you got a lot to sell. Big Ten's the first of the Power Five. Pac-12's current deals are up with Fox and ESPN. They run through 23-24. Big 12 goes last at 25. ACC doesn't negotiate for a minimum of more than a decade. Uh, Warren did not uh, directly address whether streaming football games was an option. I think the biggest thing is for us to continually be really thoughtful as we finalize our deals and come up with our thought process. The media landscape has changed, and you think of the interplay between linear television and streaming. We just have to really think through what fits for what the Big Ten stands for. What's in the best interest of our fans? What's in the best interest of our student-athletes? What's in the best interest of our member institutions? So in all these complex deals that you're working on, as you start kind of really honing in, this is the time to be thoughtful, to ask a lot of questions to determine what makes the most sense and what takes and, and really take time to do what you need to do. The Council of Presidents and Chancellors are scheduled to meet June 5th. That group has to approve any deal. Okay, fair. Um, I want to make sure that we take the appropriate time to get this wrapped up, but we're making really good progress. That's the good thing about it, Warren said. It's a great time to be in this space. He's right about that. And there are so many really talented people in this area. We have a good team. We have a great conference, and so I really look forward to making sure that these are done in a very thoughtful manner to keep our fans and our student-athletes at the center of our decisions. We're going to talk about this with Tony Knopp today at some point. Okay? All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back more in a moment. Um, Do the Yankees play the Orioles like 82 times? I just want to make sure. Because if they do, if they do, I think they're home free. Because between <laughs> between the Rangers and the Royals and the Orioles and the Guardians, they don't play anybody. It has been odd, honestly, the last couple of years. I feel like they've taken care of the Orioles in the first part of the season with all with everybody else, and then they play all the hard stuff later. But I mean, it's all going well right now. Yeah, but they they got to play somebody at some point that actually like can play the game, right? Yes, I would like to see that, too, because you have to know what you need at the deadline. They, they, by the way, also 50% of their run production from home runs. Last year was 47%. Oh, that's the suit. We'll come back with more in a moment here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Just look at the Yankees schedule. They still have 64 more games to go against the Orioles. That's kind of a big number, don't you think? Yeah. Wow. Whew. I guess supposedly the Steinbrenner family wanted that. They thought it was good for the rivalry or something. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Meanwhile, other teams have to play Houston, the Angels. Yeah. Okay. I you know. I just it's really interesting. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Let's get to uh, our guest today. Today's show brought to you by Sunbury Motors. 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Key Routes 11 and 15, Hummel's Wharf Online. 
SunburyMotors.com, Ford, Kia, Hyundai, best new inventory, with, by the way, with great warranties. Uh, great pre-owned inventory with the all-important Sunbury Motors guarantee. And last but uh, certainly not least, a great service department that just takes care of everything. Routine maintenance, inspections, diagnostics, maybe difficult stuff, they handle it all. At uh, Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Key Routes 11 and 15, Hummels Wharf online at sunburymotors.com. Let's uh, turn our attention to baseball, in part the Pirates, but more minor league than anything else. Great to have with us Rob Beer Temple from The Athletics. Sir, welcome. Dude, I'm wearing a pair of uh, 2015 K-Swiss that I use when I mow the lawn because there's a big chunk out of the back of them and they're grass stained. I will sell them to you for $2. I just finished my lawn this morning, so there's no Uh, need for me to go in that direction. (laughs) Well, if you want them, I'll I'll autograph them for you because, you know, I'm in the Hall of Fame now, so I'll do that for you. That is true. You are a Hall of Famer. Hmm. Well, not me, actually, just my scorecard from... From Sunday's game, the uh, I got an email the other day that the hall was was nice enough to ask for my scorecard from the no hitter. Yes. That wasn't really a no hitter, right? Kind of a no hitter, yeah. Sort of no hits for like the, Yeah, it's the sixth one of those, yeah, um, ever. Yeah. Somebody said, "How oh, can you believe the Pirates are involved?" I said, "The Red Sox were involved. The one Chris Young did it, did it, did it against the Indians and uh, yeah. no hitter yeah. and lost the game." Hey, right. yeah. yeah. Now my point on that. And I talked about this yesterday. Because I want to give the three pirate pitchers that got no publicity credit because they <laughs> tossed a four hit shutout. Yeah. Yeah, Quintana was really good. Yeah. In that game, yes, on Sunday. And uh but that's why when people ask me, and I get this question a lot from people, and it's usually asked in a heavy voice with a lot of sighing, why why should I go to a pirates game like that? Yeah. And I say that because you never know what's going to happen. It may not be a happy thing. It may not be a win necessarily, but it could be historic in some bizarre way. And there you had it. So that's why you go. I've seen a lot of stuff in a quarter century or or so of maybe more than that, I guess 28 years of covering ball. I've seen an unassisted triple play. I've seen a couple of no hitters. I've seen a ton of one hitters and, Shutouts and all kinds of goofy crap. And there was that thing last year that with, with, with Javier Baez and at first base. Dan. And I've seen a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. But um, but that one Sunday was right up there. That was pretty cool. What is more interesting to you right now, the Pirates or the alternate curve? The alternate curve. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm no, I think that was. I think that's a fair question. Yeah. I think it's a fair yeah. answer. Uh, yeah. What's the curve attendance like right now? I was up there last week for uh, Henry Davis night, yeah. his debut. I want to say they had about five grand. Okay. Um, it, it's kind of hard because, you know, we I mean, we, you live there. You know central Pennsylvania weather in the spring. Yeah. And it's it's not uh, predictable, nor is it always easy to tolerate. Right. But um, I think when things heat up a little bit, and uh, I've, I know that there's a lot of people who live out this way in, in Pittsburgh who have told me that, you know, they're waiting for it to – to get a little bit warmer, a little bit sunnier, and they're going to make the pilgrimage out there. It's a you 90-minute know, drive from here. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, I love the ballpark. Yeah. I just, I love the atmosphere around there. I Jock Moses does a great job running the press box yeah. and dealing with us media scribes. And, uh, that you know, you know, Madison is, is, a, is a really, you know, friendly kind of, Skipper, fun to talk to, mm-hmm. and there's just so much talent on that roster. Now, I'm curious to see, you know, they haven't said what's up with Majinski. It's, I know he has a shoulder right now. And right. He had a shoulder last year, and that shoulder, you know, people think that uh, Tommy John surgery is bad for a pitcher, and it is. Don't get me wrong. It's not like it's you. <laughs> but I've had a lot of guys tell me that the shoulder is like a nuclear bomb because there's so many moving parts and there's so many things that can go wrong in so many ways that even when you're good, you're healthy, it can still screw up your delivery forever. Well, it, it, all you have to do is watch a video of a pitcher in slow motion. Mm-hmm. And, and you can see the torque it takes and that it can, it can make a shoulder a mess. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, that's all you have to do is see. When you've talked with the people there, I mean, I'm talking about the baseball people, mm-hmm. uh, is, uh, is this talent that they have in Altoona what they hoped it would be, or uh, is there some, like, okay, he's not quite what I thought it would be, but this guy is? Yeah, I guess a little bit of both, and I know that's kind of a wishy washy. No, answer. but that's the answer but, I expected. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially, I mean, we haven't really seen Priester yet because he's been hurt. Right. Uh, and and that's, you know, it's been, um, we're, you know, a month and a half into the season, and now it's starting to become more of a, a, a thing. I mean, he last I heard, when I was down out there on Tuesday last night, he was down in Bradenton working out of Pirate City. Um, away from prying eyes like mine. And, you know, Majinski being hurt, eh, okay. Um, Burroughs, I think his, Mike Burroughs has been better than a lot of fans expected. Because he's not a – you know, he wasn't a sexy draft pick. He's not a guy you hear a ton about. Right. Um, but he's just quietly, consistently pretty darn good. Um, and has he's one of those guys who I think, you know – kind of works his way up the system, gets in a big league situation, and then sticks around for 10 years in one way or another. And at the end of it, you say, the guy kind of came out of nowhere, but did pretty well. So I, you know, I, I, I'm curious to see where, where it all ends up with Mike Burroughs. Yeah. Um, it's also hard to see their, their pitching staff because of the way they're running it now. I, I, mean, I did a story a couple of weeks ago about this new paradigm they're using where, and I had scouts already telling me last year about it, that they, they saw it was coming where starters aren't necessarily starters and sometimes they're relievers. And, right. They do the piggyback thing. and you know. Yeah. And that tell. I mean, the Pirates are spinning it as, hey, we're just spreading things around and everybody's going to be great. Yeah, but it's also, if you're a really, really good team, a deep team, you don't do that. Exactly. <laughs> you don't have to do it. And the fact that they're doing it already in the minors makes me think that they, well, I mean, you know, they want to hasten – the, the rebuild. They want to get good again as quickly as they can, and I think they see this as a way to doing it to do it, you know, without having a, a rotation that's just full of horses yeah. and monsters. Yeah, you know, but you know what? But what's interesting about that is the fan doesn't grasp that part, mm. uh, and I don't blame them for not grasping it because you you want to see a guy go out get the ball and like go out and give you six innings, maybe seven. Right? Yeah. And you feel like you're at a baseball game instead of, okay, well, he threw his uh, 42 pitches. He's done. Like, he's <laughs> done. Right? And yeah. the Pirates have been one of those organizations that has done that over and over and over again. And I'm telling you, I don't think it works. I don't think it works. Yeah. I Because wa- I watched it firsthand here. It's the same philosophy I saw here in State yeah. College, Rob. And I'm telling mm-hmm. you, uh, and uh-huh. I, the guys I watched didn't make the majors. Yeah. I think some of that Eventually, it. I mean, you know, there's, talent gets you the majors one way or the other. But also, when you when you put in that role, whether you know even in a high A, low A, you you start to think well of yourself. Well, I'm not really a guy that can do that. Mm-hmm. that they must not think that. Right. And then you start to settle for less. And yeesh, you don't want a whole farm system of guys who are willing to sell. Now, you know, I've talked with a bunch of guys at different levels of the organization, players scouts people are saying the right things obviously in public hey we're going to go we're going to make this work bubble but i also sense a lot of hesitancy like we're really doing this i'm a starting pitcher let me just start the freaking game and pitch yes exactly you know right and yeah I i think it's important that you start defining what roles are early and then if you need to adapt later and i'll give you one in the major league level i think the red sox should make chris sale a a closer I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, I mean that's just me, uh, uh-huh. but well, I think they they need to understand players need to understand defined roles and routine. Yeah, and that yeah. seems to be lost in, sometimes in some minor league systems. Yeah, and it's because you know some of it. Pitchers really are creatures of habit. They like being starters. Like being on a routine. They like knowing today I do this workout. Tomorrow I throw my bullpen. Exactly. This day I do that, and. And it's you know to position players like that they like to be able to come into the clubhouse and say, today I'm in right field and I'm going to be batting third or, or whatever. Right. But boy, when you don't do that, and and you know and the thing that I think 
we haven't really seen yet. All right, so many of the Pirates players right now are, are, are pre-ARB. You know, they're, they're still in that zero to three stage where the team controls their paychecks. Right. Then when you hit arbitration, you know, if you don't come to terms, you go to hearings. And what gets thrown around in those oh. hearings? A whole lot of numbers. Yep. And they're not good. Right. And they're not good for you. I mean, it. it yeah. creates... How many games did you oh. start? How many games did you finish? How yeah. many innings did you throw last year? And and some of this now is not in the players' control anymore. That's right. And the team is going to make out like bandit. Yep. And that's all part of it. I have so good luck to- trying to get free right. agents in a few years. I've <laughs> told people that if Altuna is what they think it is. Five to six of those players will be long-term players somewhere in the major leagues on that roster. Is that fair of me to say? I think Henry Davis will be, um, although he has work to do defensively. Everybody keeps telling me that it's still, it, 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 it's you know, his skills are there, but they're really un, un, kind of unpolished. But he seems to have the kind of drive and, and aptitude where he could polish them quickly. Yeah, uh, I think I, I, I still think Leover Piguero. Is, is going to be the real thing. I think he's going to be what the Pirates need in a lot of ways. He's, 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 a, he's a spark plug. He can be flashy. He has a personality. He can sell tickets. Um, Nick Gonzalez, I, 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 I think he can be a consistent, mm-hmm. reliable kind of hitter. Yeah. Um, you know, I was high on Priester coming into this year. Now the injury, yeah. I don't know what to think. You know, we're all waiting to see. Right. And I figured at least one of those other pitchers coming out of there, maybe somebody, you know, well, maybe Majinski, maybe Burroughs, maybe, uh, you know, there's a couple other guys who I think have potential. See, I think you're right. There's a half dozen guys in that team yeah. who could be pieces and not just guys. Yeah. Because there are people that think the whole team is going to do it. I'm like, oh, no, if you get five yeah. or six, you've hit the jackpot. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's I mean that's the that's the part I think some people, they hear, hey, all those guys came up from Greensboro. I'm like going, guys, yeah. five to six, maybe. Um, I, uh, what's the what's the deal on, on what they want to do with Cruz in Indianapolis? Mm. You know, I mean, we we were talking just before the show here about that. It, it's the, the Pirates. I think in their heart of hearts would like him to be the everyday right fielder moving forward. I think that's what his best role would be. I'm right. not a, that's I'm fair. Not a, I'm not a scout. I'm not a team official. But boy, I mean, you know, they have a really big need out there. Right. And he's a guy that runs fast, throws hard, hits the ball a ton when he's on. What's not to like? With I mean, him out you, there right here's a name you and I remember. Bobby Mercer came up and he was a shortstop, and they said, "No, he's going to be an outfielder." And mm-hmm. he had a long career in the majors, not a Hall of Fame career, but a long career in the majors as an outfielder. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Well, you know, he's he's played a little bit. I think this week. Well, maybe I guess it was maybe last over the weekend. I want to say was the first time he had played back to back games in the outfield. Um, he is not enamored of moving off a of shortstop. He's made that he's vocalized that to us, which means he certainly has vocalized that to the yes. management. Yes, yes. I can't imagine that going over real well <laughs> in the front uh, office. Yeah, um, and, and you know, and eventually they're the ones that make these calls. They're going to make these. So maybe they're willing to entertain it for now and let it. You know, we'll see what happens. And, but eventually, you know, the hammer is going to come down, and he's going to have to accept that one way or the other, whichever way it goes. Um, and maybe they do say, okay, you know what, we'll push you it short and. You can play every day, and and then when Piguero, you know, is ready to come up, somebody, some decision has to be made, whether it's somebody goes or somebody switches positions. But it's just, you know, I don't know. I just, I just see that as potential stumbling block. I don't, you know, is the kid ready to, you know, is he, how, is he going to listen to what the what management is saying? Is management right? I, I, you know, I think it, the decision to put him in the option would be. Yeah. But, you know, who knows? I mean, the kid knows himself best, and it's his career. Yeah. But it is, at this point, it's just a, a little bit of something interesting to watch. But I think the longer it goes on, it's going to become more of a high wire act. Why is the current club a little bit better than people thought they would be? Oh, um, you know. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said a little bit better. <laughs> All right, I will give you that. I will give you. Johnny Parado, who's, who's worked in, in covering ball in Pittsburgh for forever, since like the, the early 90s, even right. before that maybe, uh, asked me that the other day. He's like, you know, do you think this club is a little bit better than we thought? And I thought, well, you know, uh, they played the Nationals. Which yeah, are they're bad. Horrific. 
Yeah. The Cubs are a bad team. The Reds yeah. are a horrifically bad team. Oh, historically. Cardinals, <laughs> Cardinals are not a very good team. They're mm-hmm. okay. And the Padres, the Dodgers, yeah. And the, and the Dodgers, I don't know if you saw any of the games in that series when the Pirates took two out of three. The, the entire Dodgers team looked to me like they wanted to be anywhere. They were totally disinterested. Baseball. Yeah. You know, there, I remember there was one – somebody hit a, a, a gap shot toward the toward the notch, and Bellinger just kind of, you know, I'll run after it. I, you know, I'll get there. There it is somewhere out here along the wall. Right. And was it Chavis maybe ended up with a triple? Yeah, Michael Chavis. I thought, no way that should happen. You yeah. should be on that ball. Yeah. Um, they just looked like their heads were in a completely different time zone. So, um, I mean, the schedule has helped the Pirates in a lot of ways. But – at the same time, I mean, those are teams that the Pirates have to beat. You know, a couple of years ago, they wouldn't have beaten us. Right, that's would... right. Yeah. So, yeah, I think in that regard, maybe the, the offense at times has been more opportunistic. Uh, but lately, it has not. I mean, they, they haven't been driving in runs with, with, with men on base. Um, they haven't been getting guys on base. Yeah, I was no. about uh, to say that they haven't <laughs> been getting guys on base either. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the starting rotation – Quintana is better than I expected. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is what I expected. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Which, yeah, the, the bullpen, I think the bullpen is exhausted, and it's mid-May, and that should really be keeping Derek Shelton awake at night. Yeah. Um, because when we get to July, oh, my. Um, especially if they you know, start making moves and trade Bednar or whatever i mean it's uh so maybe a little bit better record because you know they've taken advantage of of a few situations but you know if i'm looking there for for signs of like yeah. people ask me before is this feel like 2012 to you no no it does not no it it doesn't it feels maybe like 20 you know 09 <laughs> okay. yeah 2010 where you're like that. maybe yeah, someday yeah. kind of sort of yeah but, so i mean you know i'm it could be, Lord knows, it could be a lot worse. They could, you know, look at what's happened in Cincinnati. I don't think anybody saw that coming. No. What no. a dumpster fire. Um, yeah. So, yay, yeah, you know, some, some some good signs. Always a pleasure, my friend. We will talk again shortly. And I know we talk more. I don't, for some odd reason, we talk more about Altoona than Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm never wrong with that. Altoona is a fine town. Yes, it is. a fine town. So. Oh, hey, I would be remiss again every time I talk to you. I have to give a shout-out to somebody in, in Center County. Oh, please. Find the fine nurses and doctors at Mount Nittany Medical Center for taking care of my little girl. Mm. Um, when, when Unfortunately, we missed graduation for that, but mm. they got her back up on her feet. And so thank you. Thank you to all the folks in the hospital. The great people there, great professionals who care. Yes, indeed. Rob, thank you, and I'm glad she's doing better. Oh, yeah, doing well. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate right. it, man. Mm-hmm. When car repairs get difficult. Well, I, I just don't know. Um, Me neither. We get good. Sunbury Motors. More than quality new and used cars, Sunbury Motors specializes in complicated auto repair diagnosis. They can handle intricate repairs and even complete auto body with service open Monday through Friday, 7 till 4. And Sunbury Motors has made simple repairs easy. Maintaining your vehicle is necessary. Finding the time to do it is difficult. Welcome to Sunbury Motors Quick Lane. Open 7 till 4, Monday through Friday. Just walk in or call ahead. Relax in their remodeled waiting room with Wi-Fi, beverages, and snacks. Will Sunbury Motors factory train techs take care of your oil change, tire alignments, brakes, and inspections. Quick Lane, 6.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday, 6.30 30 till 2. Sunbury Motors, Ford and Hyundai, North 4th Street, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. We take the mm. out of auto repair.